have you guys join us. I am ready to start. I don't know about you, but I am so excited because it is the holiday season. Uh, Thanksgiving is next week, and I get Thursday and Friday off, which means I get a four-day weekend, and I'm so excited. <laughs> that don't happen very often. Um, so I wanted to share with you just a very few, as in like two, of uh, my favorite holiday recipes. And um, if you have been to our cooking classes before, you may recognize a little bit um, of these, but you will also discover that one of them, I have massacred the recipe and totally redone it, so it tastes better. <laughs> so anyway, welcome to our class. Uh, we are um, excited about sharing it with you, and we just wish that you could be here in person. That's uh, my worst thing, is I don't have an audience. So uh, you guys have already been commenting. Keep those comments coming. Uh, Daniel and Macy will try to holler them out at me um, as they see them, and I uh, will try to answer any questions along the way or um, uh, laugh with you, or uh, you can laugh with me or whatever. Anyway, uh, why don't we open up the word of prayer? Pastor Daniel. I will follow suit and take my mask off so you can see me. <laughs> Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you for your many blessings towards us. Thank you that we can have this class, even though uh, our audience is online. And Lord, as we as we learn together, as we have fun together, I pray that you will help us to glorify you and bless this food that we are about to prepare. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um Macy, can you shut the ice machine off so yes. we have a little bit less noise in here? So, holiday cooking. Uh, one of the things that I enjoy about the holidays is that it is colder outside, and so you can cook more without heating up your house. Uh, the rest of the cold weather I could do without because I don't like cold weather. But um, I think we need the cameras a little closer together because I'm going while I'm looking one eye on each camera. There we go. Uh, we have one camera on Facebook Live and one camera is videoing to eventually upload to YouTube. So if you have missed one of our cooking classes, you can go back and watch our YouTube channel um, and you will find some of our previous cooking classes. So the first one we are going to start with is sweet potatoes. Because when you think of fall, when you think of a, a cold weather, and when you think of the holidays, sweet potatoes kind of fits all of those, doesn't it? Um, so I have here a pan of sweet potatoes that we have already baked in the oven. And um, I, there are so many ways that you can cook sweet potatoes. Uh, you can steam them on the stove, kind of like we steamed uh, the butternut squash last month. Uh, you can also uh, uh, cook them in a crock pot. You can cook them in an instant pot, or you can bake them in the oven. So uh, I went and, of course, uh, other people fry them, but that wouldn't work for the, these recipes. So I went for the easy method of just throwing them in the oven whole. I didn't peel them. The only thing I did was scrape the dirt off of them, or Alexi did, one of us did. Um, and uh, we baked them whole in the oven at 400 degrees until they were soft. You can, uh, I poked each one, covered it with tin foil, I, and that's um, my favorite way to do it for this recipe because it makes them a little bit drier. The oven tends to dry them out a little more. And for our sweet potato balls, which is what we're gonna make right now, uh, you want a drier sweet potato. But you can still steam them or any other method if you don't have time to wait for them to cook in the oven. So for our sweet potato balls, what we need is uh, after we've cooked some sweet potatoes, we need to peel them and we're gonna mash them. And our recipe calls for four cups of sweet potatoes. Four cups of mashed sweet potatoes. So I love it. When they're in, when they're done in the oven, they feel so nice and easy. The skins just like fall right off of them. Um, and honestly, I think personally that the oven makes them taste better. Uh, because they're a little bit dehydrated, I don't put any water in the casserole dish. Um, it's almost like it caramelizes them a little bit. How long did you say in the oven? I didn't say how long because it depends on the size of your sweet potato. <laughs> so if you're, I did 400 degrees. 
Um, if your sweet potatoes are small like this, they'll be done in less than an hour. But um, if they are big fat monsters, well this one's a fat monster, um, or you can, you know, bigger. I usually set the timer for 45 minutes and I poke them, and then I have an idea of how long they need. I, I poke them with a sharp knife, and uh, did you have a question, Lexi? Yes. Okay. I poke them with a sharp knife, and uh, if they're super hard, I give them another 20 minutes. If they're starting to get soft, I give them 10 more minutes. And if the knife can't go through it all, it needs another half hour. So. Bill and Charlotte say, says, I like to steam potatoes in the Instant Pot. Yes, that is the fastest method, right? <laughs> Instant Pot works very well. They are also a little bit more moist, but they taste really good that way too. And uh, quick and easy is always the best, right? Charlotte, you'll have to tell me how long you do them in an Instant Pot. Nancy says hello. Hi, Nancy. Thanks for joining us. If anybody else has joined recently, I want you to comment who you are. You can always say where you're from if you want to. You don't have to. But uh, I love to hear from you. I don't like talking to cameras. Cameras make me more nervous than anything else on the face of this earth. And uh, so, yeah. She's nervous, don't she? No, not at all. She's a natural. Totally <laughs> natural. Well, the great thing is when I get nervous, I get goofy, and so that works out really well for these cooking glasses. <laughs> <laughs> what isn't natural is the rows of sweat that um, go raining down my back yeah, halfway right. through. <laughs> but if you guys talk to me, it alleviates my nervousness, I promise. Um, I don't have a measuring cup, Macy. If I'm supposed to measure four cups of sweet potatoes, I need a four cup measuring cup, and then I'll have a general idea of how many sweet potatoes I've peeled so far. Stace, Stacy Osterman Chefka says, hi, Stacy from Michigan. Hi, Stacy, thanks for joining us. I saw you're gonna be, you already did, or you're gonna be doing a Facebook Live cooking class too. I wanna watch yours. <laughs> but I'm so glad you can join us for ours. I think I have about four cups here. I don't think I'm gonna do the last two potatoes, but uh, she is probably bringing me a measuring cup in just a minute. So then we'll know for sure. Stacy asks, how do we get the recipes for what you are making? Okay, so the sweet potato balls, I believe, are on my website. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, which is www.christinaskitchen.org. Christinaskitchen.org and Christina is spelled with a K. Um, and uh, if they're not on there, somebody holler at me and I'll make sure they're on there by tomorrow. Uh, the other recipe that we're doing tonight, I know for sure is on our website because Daniel printed it off the website so I could do the class tonight. So when we get there, I'll tell you which one that is. Yeah, they are on the website. I'm going to put the link in oh, the good. comments here. So yes, the sweet potato balls are on our website. Maybe I should have Daniel print that one too to make sure I'm doing it the way the website says. Yeah. Stacy says, I already did mine. It was on Zoom. I'll send you a link. Oh! You need to do it on Facebook Live, Stacy. But Zoom will go to Facebook Live. Then I can watch it. Charlotte says, I cut the sweet potatoes until they're about the size of a golden potato and pressure cook for 11 minutes. All right. So that's the instant pot method, you guys. Um, because I haven't done it yet. <laughs> that's a scant four cups. So I'm going to do one more potato because I want to make sure I have a full four cups of uh, mashed sweet potato. How many does four cups make? Uh, four cups will make one casserole dish. Uh, one three-quart casserole dish, which you'll see here in just a minute. So when I make it, usually at home, I double it. I do eight cups of sweet potatoes. Um, and uh, basically, I just bake Two, two pans of sweet potatoes, make eight cups of sweet potato um, mixture, and then I do two full pans. And the great thing is with these sweet potato balls is that you don't have to eat them right away. They're good for several days. You don't have to bake them right away. You just warm them up when you're ready to eat them. Uh, they're wonderful for potlucks, uh, Christmas parties, uh, dinners, that kind of stuff, family, family get-togethers. Uh, I am known for 
almost every family get together in the holidays and bring you see the damn walls. <laughs> So there's our four cups of mashed sweet potatoes. All mashed up nicely. You don't have to worry about getting every last chunk of it. It does not have to be baby food. It can have some texture. So I do not throw in the food processor. The secret I have found though to making sure that these sweet potato balls taste good is number one, having sweet potatoes that taste good. Uh, try your sweet potatoes. Uh, if you're not sure, you haven't had them or whatever, make sure the sweet potatoes taste good. And then secondly, make sure that they are well baked. Uh, they need to be baked all the way through until they're mush. You don't want any hard spots. Thank you. Yeah, just put that right here. You don't want any hard spots um, because those will, because you're not really baking the sweet potato balls. You're just going to warm them up before you serve them. So make sure they're well cooked. Okay, so we have four cups of sweet potatoes. The next, it says uh, 10 ounces of crushed pineapple. And if you like lots of pineapple, you can do up to 20 ounces. Uh, a typical crushed pineapple can is a 20 ounce can. So you can use as little or as much as you want, depending on how wet your sweet potatoes are. And once again, that's why I said I prefer the oven method for this uh, recipe because it dries them out a little more and I can put more pineapple in without getting them too wet. Um, the only thing that's gonna dry up your uh, potatoes or your sweet potato balls is your chopped nuts. So um, we're going to put the crushed pineapple in. If you're worried um, about getting them too wet, you can drain a little bit of the juice out. If your sweet potatoes are really dry, you don't have to drain any juice out. But crushed pineapple doesn't have very much juice. <laughs> you can see I'm getting about a quarter cup of juice out of this thing, maybe, maybe a half cup. So it's not very much. Are you are you? Pressing, I just, ha I just have the lid. Wood. I'm just gently holding it. Okay, so you're not like. I'm not smashing it. Out. No, my sweet potatoes are not super moist, so I'm gonna start by putting half the can in, and then if it looks like it can handle it, I'm gonna add more of the can in there. But half is your minimum amount. So you do not have to have a scale and weigh out 10 ounces. <laughs> the, the only reason it says 10 ounces is because that's what the website wanted. <laughs> okay, so our next ingredient is, um, it says uh, ch chopped walnuts or chopped pecans. You can use either one. Uh, my favorite is to use toasted walnuts or toasted pecans. Um, but if you don't have toasted, it's okay. You can use raw. Uh, either one will work. I'm using pecans today because I have some that are already chopped and ready to go. So it makes it very easy. And uh, let's see, how much do I need? I need half a cup. I think that's what legs you put in here. So we're going to say that's a half cup. Okay, ready anyway. <sighs> that's what makes it really good. Um, and then we need some flavor. Uh, and once again, you are going to adjust this depending on the flavor of your sweet potatoes. So you will want to taste it and play around with it. Uh, if your potatoes are super sweet, you may have to cut down the sweetener. If they're not very sweet at all, you may have to increase it. Uh, same with the salt. If you've got lots of flavor, you're going to adjust the salt as needed. And um, so everything is totally adjustable to taste. The nice thing is everything in here is cooked. So you can stick a spoon in there and taste it anytime you want to know if you want to put more in. Uh, so the next one is an optional ingredient and it just adds a little more of a maple flavor and that's the maple flavoring. Um, and it's a half a teaspoon of maple flavoring. This is totally optional. If you don't have it, it's perfectly fine. You're still going to get some maple flavor in your maple syrup, which is going in. in so the maple bit. flavor is not the same thing as maple syrup. No, this is, this is a flavor. It's a natural flavor. Um, salt. We have salt, I'm assuming? Yes, we do. Thank you. You can see what's over there and I can. Salt is also a half teaspoon. So we're just going to fill it halfway. And the maple syrup. It's a quarter cup of maple syrup. 
And like I said, once you put that in, or if you know your sweet potato is super sweet, start with less and work up to it. Um, it's not open. Um, or if, uh, or taste it afterwards and make sure you don't need to add more. And of course, you can always adjust your taste too. If you don't like stuff as sweet, then just put in like a tablespoon or two. Um, you can totally adjust it. I'm not capable of it. You may need a knife. Possibly. No, it's covered in sweet potatoes, but I have a big knife. If I don't kill you, there you go. See if you can get it out now. We will have maple syrup shortly. No commercials. <laughs> All right, so quarter cup of maple syrup. And if you do not have maple syrup, I have also used sorghum molasses instead. Not blackstrap molasses, sorghum molasses. Um, and that actually works very well in this recipe. Um, when you use the sorghum molasses, you do want the maple flavor because it'll be the only maple flavor you get. But if you don't care, you leave it out and you'll have sorghum flavor. And that's not bad either. Okay, so I have everything in here now. So I'm just gonna mix this up. You can see it's it's really nice textured. It's not soupy. Um, it's not super dry. And I think I can get away with adding a little more pineapple. I like lots of pineapple in mine. If you don't, you put less in. But I'm gonna throw a little bit more in here. I think that will do it. So this is about the texture that I like. The best part is, if you ever liked playing with mud pies as a child, that's totally what it feels like you're doing in this. You seen this is a mud pie? It will feel like it. You just watch. You'll see what I'm talking about. I've had these before. It doesn't taste like mud pie. <laughs> no, they don't taste like I said it feels like it in your fingers. <laughs> so we're going to take our casserole dish. This is our three-quarter casserole dish, and we are going to make it look pretty by putting uh, pineapple rings in the bottom of it. So now I've got my, no, those are chunks. I don't want chunks, I want rings. Pineapple slices, and uh, if you're only doing one dish, you just need one can. And this is going to have a ton of juice in it too. This has a lot more juice than the crushed pineapple does, but I always save it, drink it, put it in a jar, Use the recipes. If I have leftover pineapple rings, I use it to store the leftover pineapple rings. I also am going to use some of it in here. So I'm going to take a little bit of this juice and I'm going to put it on the bottom of my pan. You don't want a lot, you just want a little bit and that's going to keep it from burning when you put it in the oven later. So just a little bit, tiny layer of juice in the bottom. Then we're going to take these pineapple rings and we're going to lay them can you see? You kind of have to squish it just a little bit to get three across. Can you see what I'm doing? <laughs> Can you see it okay? No? <laughs> just laying them in the juice, right? Yep, just laying it down. <coughs> and I might be wrong. I am wrong. There are only 10 slices. You need two cans. You want to see if there's another can of pineapple slices? I think there is. In the back? Yep. Ten slices means you are two slices short to fill your container. <laughs> That's what I know. Um, so, you have, right there. you have two options. That's chunks. That's you have two options. You can just make ten balls and leave an empty spot. And then, like, put the rest of your filling in a container and stick it in the freezer or the fridge to make balls later. Or you can open another can to take two pineapple rings out, which is what I'm going to do right now. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm not going to double the juice out of this one because it's going to have to go in a container anyway. 
There we go. Now we have 12. So this is my favorite part. This is what I call making mud pies. I'm going to use gloves for this. I wish you guys could be here because I tell you this is the most amazing feast you ever ate. If you think of a sweet potato, um, a sweet potato marshmallow casserole that a lot of people make, you know, it's like so sickening sweet. Some people like it. I don't like stuff that's quite as sweet. I usually make marshmallows on top of it. <laughs> so we are not going to do that. We're going to take this, and this is fairly soft, but it's not like soupy wet, okay? This is my mud pie, right? And I'm going to actually form it into a ball. And I never know how much to put in the first time, so I usually have to adjust my balls. But you want it to be about slightly smaller than your pineapple ring. And you want to very carefully set it down on the pineapple ring. It looks like we got a pretty good size there. Victoria says we are watching from our TV and it looks delicious. Yay! They are delicious. <laughs> we have some mouths drooling over here. <laughs> there, I made that one a little bit smaller. I try to make them in size so that they don't like touch each other in the casserole dish. You want a little bit of space between each one. Lexi, I'm going to need a few more chopped pecans for sprinkling on top. Okay. I've got the empty bowl here if you want to grab it. Thank you. How much more like another half of that? Yeah, probably. think about this but when you play with it you tell me if you think it feels like playing with mud pies <laughs> that's what it always reminds me of when I'm doing it but then you try it what Daniel try it yeah what see if he thinks it feels like mud pies he's yeah. holding the camera let him do is make a ball <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it looked like if Daniel made a ball I don't think oh. happened. okay thank you thank uh, you hey now <laughs> I think I can make a mud pie. <laughs> That's alright, I'll let you do it this time. I'll do it off camera. <laughs> that works. I hope I'm inspiring you to go home and make these, or not go home. You're already at home, I'm guessing. Go to your kitchen and make them. How's that? <laughs> you can start. You can start making them right now. You've got the recipe there. Yeah, just go stick those sweet potatoes in the oven. You know, the nice thing is about this recipe is you don't have to do it all in one day if you don't want to. You can bake the sweet potatoes, uh, peel them, and stick them in the fridge, and make this recipe the next day. And it's not such a difficult recipe. I mean. And you can also make these balls like I'm doing and just stick the dish directly in the fridge and uh, wait until you're ready to serve them and just warm them up. Um, you can make them two or three days in advance. That way you can really get ahead for your holiday cooking. That's what I usually do. Um, if I know I've got holiday cooking, like especially like say Thanksgiving dinner, we usually end up doing two Thanksgiving dinners. We do one on Thursday and one on Saturday. And so I know I can make these on Wednesday and they'll be good till Saturday. And uh, as long as I just keep them in the fridge. Stephanie says I do want to make them. <laughs> and they do not take long to make uh, as far as baking goes. They just have to warm up thoroughly I usually like to allow about 20 to 30 minutes, um, and they don't have to bake very hot. They can bake at 400, 400, mercy, that's hot, <laughs> 300 degrees. Um, and yeah, they warm up within 20 to 30 minutes. So um, 
Like if I'm baking uh, a roast or a casserole or something in the oven, I'll bake it first and then at the end, just maybe I'll pull it out of the oven and let it cool on the stove and I'll throw these in the hot oven and just let them heat until it's time to eat. So you can see how close this recipe comes to your 12 uh, balls here. That's all that's left. <laughs> So it comes out very, very, very close to being on the size of balls that you make. And whatever's left over, this leftover batter freezes beautifully. Um, and hey, you don't always have to make it to balls either. You can just eat it by itself. It tastes amazing. Um, but uh, before I finish the balls, let me take these gloves off. The last thing I do is I sprinkle the top with a, the chopped pecans or chopped walnuts, either one. Um, Gloves are a great way to keep my hands clean when I don't have a sink. Alright, so I'm just going to take this, these uh, chopped pecans and I'm just going to put a few pieces on top. Like I said, you can use walnuts or pecans, and they can be toasted or raw, either one. It does not matter, um, especially on the ones you're sprinkling on top because the oven's going to bake them anyway. I wish you guys could just all come and taste these. They taste so good. For me personally, I would rather have sweet potato balls than a pumpkin pie. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like it's like your meal and dessert all in one. Because it's so good. They are good. Jean Tucker says, I'll take some of these when you come up on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> if I have any left, Jean, you, there's hungry eyes all over here. <laughs> <laughs> But I can promise you on my delivery route, if you're on my delivery route in Somerset, I will be making these at least uh, twice in December for the delivery route. So you will get some, um, even if uh, all these get eaten. Charlotte says, these are delicious. We usually have a problem waiting for dessert time. We have been known to have them for breakfast. <laughs> Hey, why not? It's sweet potatoes, right? <laughs> I, I'm totally in favor of eating these for breakfast. No problem at all. And they really don't have that much sugar in them. No. There we go. What do you think? Ready? Well, ready to put in the oven or the fridge. Good enough to eat. <laughs> so, I think I have my oven going right now. So, I'm going to stick these in the oven while I do the next recipe. Uh, so maybe I'll let the baby. Ooh. <laughs> Come on. Phone's going off. Don't go away, we've got more coming. Christina is coming back for another recipe demonstration. Yes, yes, and Lex, you reminded me of one thing I forgot to tell you. When you bake it, bake it uncovered. You want it nice and golden. Um, How long? So, 20 minutes. All right. How long? 300. 300 for 20 minutes. All right, there we go. So, we're ready for the next recipe. And that is, uh, this is a recipe that I've also done before, but I have completely revamped the recipe, completely changed it, 
and added more flavor to it. It was good already, but uh, it's really good now. All right, we got our 20 minute timer. And that is um, a millet, millet patties. Some of you have had millet. If you've been to any of my cooking classes, you know I use a lot of millet. I like it for a lot of things. Um, but uh, sometimes, um, let's see, what else, what all do we use millet for? We make millet cheesecake. We make our creamy herb dressing out of millet. Uh, we make uh, banana splits. <laughs> we do banana things. splits with millet, that's right. That's my favorite. Uh, we've done, I've done a, a millet meatloaf, which you, you can actually use this recipe as a meatloaf if you want, but it, I have a better meatloaf than it, so I don't usually I use this for patties. Creamy herb dressing. Um, yeah, the creamy herb dressing. And I also use millet and gravy. I make a white gravy with millet. So there's a lot of things you can do with millet. The millet uh, today that I cooked, I cooked in the Instant Pot. You can also cook it on the stove. Uh, millet is uh, birdseed. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best way to call it. <laughs> it's birdseed. It's those little yellow balls that you see in the wild birdseed mix. So um, this is our cooked millet. When it's cooked, it's almost, it's similar to grits. Um, not quite the same, but it kind of has a similar consistency. Um, not the same flavor, obviously, because it's not corn. Um, but uh, today we're going to make patties with the millet. So when I cook this millet in the Instant Pot, my favorite way to cook millet is uh, one cup of millet to three cups of water. And I, this year I have two cups of millet, six cups of water, and uh, I did it for 45 minutes. I like my millet really well cooked, so it's almost like creamy. Um, and that makes it really good in the patties. So you don't have any crunchy balls uh, going on. And uh, so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to saute some onion and garlic. Uh, that's a, uh, trying to uh, make a spot to get to my cutting board here. Do you want me to mention garlic while you're doing the onion? Make it faster? Well, um, the onion has to cook first. Okay. But you can uh, take away the pineapple stuff. Okay. Because we're done with the pineapple stuff. And that'll give me more space on my cutting board. So I'm going to take an onion. And uh, if you want to follow along with this recipe, you can look on our website, Christine's Kitchen, again. Uh, the recipe is called Millet Patties. And I know I'm following the recipe off my website because Daniel printed it off it for me. And I put um, a link on the, on the comment as well. And he's got a link there for you, so you have no excuse. You can follow along. Um, so onion is optional. You don't have to put it in. I used to make these patties without chopped onion or garlic, um, but I've recently added it in because it adds so much more flavor. Um, and I really, really like the flavor that it adds. So if this onion will peel, we'll be in better shape. But when I do the onion, the one thing that I want to make sure that I do is finely chopped. Um, you can finely chop it with a knife or with a chopper, or um, but you want it chopped very small. Because if your onion is too big of chunks, it's going to um, be uh, make the patties fall apart. They're not going to work very well. So there's two ways we can chop it. One, uh, we can chop it with a knife, nice and small, and I'll probably like cry this whole time because this is a hot onion. Uh, or you can cut it in slices, like I'm going to do right now, and run it through a chopper, a hand chopper. So we're just going to chop very thin slices here. I'm gonna make some noise with the chopper. So the outlet turned off. I need a, a different outlet. <laughs> this outlet is falling out. Daniel, can you help me please with that somehow? While I chop this onion. Yeah, that'll work. That one will work much better. 
Yeah, yeah, just take that one out and stick it in the, that one won't fall out because it's a three prong. Nope, that one's already handed off. Can you take the other out? There we go. That should work. Now we have it on again. Thank you. Okay, now that my stove is back on, <laughs> back to Zion, and uh, all of my everything is going to make noise. So, Christmas is coming up. If you do not have a chopper, I recommend you putting one on your wish list. Because they are absolutely amazing. <laughs> when you need to chop precise, precision sizes, um, this you can see I'm using a tiny blade on this chopper. Um, it also comes with a larger blade. And uh, it's perfect for potato salads, uh, for uh, dicing tomatoes. Um, freezing peppers, chopping onion, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, just a little plug for your holiday wish list if you don't have one. So there's my finely chopped onion. How do you like that? Perfect square dices. I could never do that with a knife. <laughs> and now I'm crying. <laughs> so this onion, I'm going to put in here. And I'm gonna need the water jug, you see. Okay. When I saute, I don't like to use oil if I can help it. Sometimes it asks me to be on the pan, but I prefer to use water. brown these onions. I don't have anything in the pan right now. It's just sizzling on its own just with a preheated pan. I have no oil and no water in here. Well, yeah, I have onions in here. <laughs> You're right about that. So while that's going, I'm going to mince some garlic. How much does it call for? Four cloves of garlic? Here, Macy, you want to mince the garlic? I'm going to let you do it now. You can just mince it straight into there. mostly cooked uh, because the garlic will make it stick to the bottom. I think garlic is always sticky, yes. Can you that Here, I'll just use my Thank you. So, 
this. Yes, I am doing that. But I do need a measuring cup for the milk. For corn. Mm -hmm. So this millet uh, is freshly cooked. It's hot. And uh, it's been cooling off just since we started the class. It finished cooking just before the class started. You do not have to use hot, freshly cooked millet. Uh, you can use cold millet. Uh, the only difference is uh, hot, freshly cooked millet, thank you, will be more creamy, will have a better texture, and your cold millet is going to be a little more chunky. You just have to mash it a little harder. Um, but you can use either way. It does not have to be hot, freshly cooked. Um, it can be cooler. So I just need three cups of millet for this recipe. And most of the time when I make it, I like to double the recipe. And I do six cups. Um, you can see I have extra millet. I'll be making more <laughs> after the glass is over. But uh, All right, so there's our three cups of millet. You can see that's gonna make a small batch. Um, you better stir. I'm gonna need one more wood spoon. Just a regular one? Yeah. All right, so in this recipe, um, the other thing that we can add to the cooked onion and garlic is some shredded carrots which I have those here, and it calls for a half a cup of shredded carrots. I'm gonna throw those in right now, and I'm gonna guess what a half cup is. I'll let those cook. Thank you, thank you very much. Need something to stir this. So we got some carrots, we got our onion and garlic in here. You can smell it? <laughs> Smells good, doesn't it? All right, we're just gonna let that finish. And so we have our three cups of millet. We need some tofu. Um, I think there's one there in the fridge. Tofu is also an optional ingredient in this recipe, uh, but it's going to add our protein. And uh, I'm going to need uh, one of those thin cotton cloths to squeeze it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse this out. I think I have a knife. Yeah, I have a knife. I'm going to rinse my tofu out, and then I am going to, how much are you using? Half a block. You can see I normally do a whole recipe because one recipe calls for one block of tofu. I mean, double recipe calls for one block of tofu. So I usually make a double batch. Yes, that's the correct. So my tofu is drained. I always smell it. Make sure it does not smell bad. Because <laughs> I've had that happen on occasion. We had a tofu, we had actually we had a few tofu. Um, come out of the grocery store with where they packed it on accident with no water in it. And the tofu was like yellow looking and smelled awful. So always check and smell your tofu. <laughs> Lexi knows she smelled some of those. Yeah, it does. It smells like manure. Rotten tofu smells like manure. Yes. It's awful. So you will know if you ever have rotten tofu. You'll know loud and clear. So we're going to take our half a block of tofu here. And we're going to put it in a thin cloth, a thin cotton towel, lint free cotton towel. And we're going to wring it out. We're going to squeeze, I always say, I'm milking the tofu cow. That's what I was saying. But it, it feels like you're squeezing the curds, you know? Yes, uh, I, I used to do it so I can use it instead of this measuring cup. British pan, that's a lot easier. There's my sink. I'm just going to squeeze all the water out of this. And of course, in the process of squeezing, I'm also mashing it, which is what I want. I want mashed tofu. 
But I want it dry because the millet is wet enough. I don't need more moisture in my recipe. So we're just going to squeeze out all that water. And like I said, this adds protein to our recipe. But if you want it soy free, the recipe does work without tofu. It is an optional ingredient. Um, so there is our mashed tofu. You want to stir that? Thank you. They look like they're about done. I'm just going to shut it off. And then just put the lid on it so it stays moist. Okay, so there's our mashed tofu. And the next ingredient is almond butter or peanut butter. Uh, here at the restaurant, we use almond butter because we're a peanut-free restaurant. Um, but I also like the flavor that almond butter gives it. Um, the flavor that it gives it is more like a meaty flavor, um, and rather opposed to a uh, really, really strong peanut flavor, <laughs> like peanut butter has. Um, if you like that strong peanut flavor and you want it, use peanut butter. Um, but if you want the meaty flavor, almond butter does better. And we're going to use a third of a cup of almond butter. There's our third cup there. I never would have thought you would put almond butter on too. <laughs> Well, no one yeah, ever spreads no no one ever spreads almond butter on tofu and eats it that way. But <laughs> the reason we're putting almond butter in here is because this is actually an oil-free recipe. So the almond butter is our fat in the recipe. Um, it's the only oil that we have in the entire thing. So that makes it a whole food plant-based recipe. All right. So the next is the seasonings now. Um, I make my own country-style seasoning. And if you need the recipe for that, it's also on my website. Um, so if you just look up under miscellaneous recipes, you'll find it. And we're going to put in one and a half teaspoons of country stuff, which there's three teaspoons and a tablespoon, so I'm doing a half a tablespoon. So there's my country style. And then um, we need a tablespoon of onion powder. Now that country style seasoning, I think you, you said that, but you can find the recipe for that yes. on... Yes, Christina's on our kitchen. website, christinaskitchen.org. Yes, the website is there. The recipe is there. And if you live near here, you can buy it for me because we make it. <laughs> and what else goes in here? Some dried parsley. Parsley. Now see parsley. Am I blind? Now see parsley. Can you get some parsley, please? And after the parsley comes, um, Tamari. Tamari is optional, um, but uh, you can use any kind of soy sauce, you can use rags, or you can leave it out and just increase the country style seasoning instead. Um, but uh, I have a teaspoon here somewhere. Yes, I do. Just gonna put some. Thank you. I need one tablespoon. No tablespoons right there. Just throw it in. All right, so there is our tamari and parsley, and then smoked paprika is next. That's a half teaspoon. Um, a lot of these seasonings are optional ingredients. If you don't have one, don't be afraid to leave it out. The nice thing about this. This is also an already cooked recipe, so you can taste it. Um, if something, if you don't have something, you're not sure whether you should put something else in or not, just taste it. Uh, make sure that it tastes good before you make it to patties and cook it. Um, that's the beauty of this. You can totally adjust all the seasonings as you like. The smoked paprika gives it almost like a, a barbecue flavor, and that smoke, smoke flavor. But it's just got just a tiny bit in it, so not a lot. And then and the last ingredient is coconut aminos. Um, and the coconut aminos is also like a soy sauce, but it has no soy in it. 
Um, it's made from the sap of the coconut palm tree. Um, and like I said, if you do not have it, let's check the sweet potato bowls. If you do not have it, just increase your country style seasoning to taste. Now, could you use one or the other, either coconut aminos or tamari? Um, coconut aminos has lower sodium. Let me shut this off. Is less sodium. Um, tamari is more sodium. So you will have to adjust it to taste because each one is higher or lower in salt. You have to find what works for you. Okay, so we're just going to uh, throw these onions in here now. mixture before we add the breadcrumbs. Um, you can see it's fairly thick already. The breadcrumbs are going to make it thicker. And uh, you can also leave the breadcrumbs out. The main reason I put the breadcrumbs in is to help bind it together, help it hold together when we make it into patties. Um, but it works with or without it. So we're going to Turn on our griddle now. It's got water on it from me next to the stove. We're gonna turn on our griddle and we're gonna preheat it and we're gonna make a couple patties. How are we doing on time? What time is it? Miss Jada, do you want the yes. rest of the crumbs to I got them out, but do you want us to call them? I just need one cup. No, not pretty bad. The, the millet is hot. Thank you. My help is about plug it in. It's five minutes to seven. Yeah. Oh, good. We're doing great on time. Because we're just about finished. Just got this griddle to heat up here. We're done with this. So I'm going to put hot my breadcrumbs in here. Yeah, those hotly. I'm going to make this up, and this is going to be nice and thick now. I love the way the millet holds together so nicely. If you don't have millet and you want to make this, you can actually use um, grits or um, polenta, cooked polenta. It will just have a slight corn flavor. So I'm going to show you what this is like. I love the texture of this. Here's my mud pie number two. <laughs> the second mud pie of the day. <laughs> This one holds together nicer though. It's got a really different texture. Um, you can see it. Like you can shape it literally in any shape or size that you want. When I make the patties, I like to make nice big ones where it's like, you know, one is like a whole serving 
um, so each person can get one or two. Um, so I make them nice and big. But see, look, they're not very sticky at all. Um, they hold together beautifully, and they cook up beautifully. And when you're cooking them, you're not supposed to cook them all the way through. Uh, you're just going to brown them on each side. And you can do it on a griddle like we're going to do tonight, or you can put it on a cookie sheet and just bake it a little bit. Um, there's, there's many ways that you can you do it. So I'm just going to wait a minute for this griddle to heat up, and then we will put it on. Does anyone have any questions? You guys have had a few comments, but I haven't heard very many questions. Do you want to pull the sweet potatoes out of the oven? We'll show you what the sweet potato balls look like while we're waiting for the griddle to warm up. Now, when I am serving these caddies, there are two ways that I like to serve them. One is with ketchup. You can use homemade ketchup or store-bought ketchup or whatever. I put like a little bit of ketchup just right along a strip down the middle and serve it with ketchup. It's really good that way. The other way it's really good is with cranberry sauce. So if you're serving it for holidays, um, you can use either one uh, to serve it with. Now, if you're gonna do a cranberry sauce with it, I like the more saucy cranberry, not the kind you slice up in rings, but where it's a little bit more like sauce and you can like drizzle it across like you would with the ketchup. But um, Karen asked, do you have a YouTube channel with your past cooking videos? I do have a YouTube channel, and if you go to our website, I'm going to just set that here. If you go to our website, www.christinaskitchen.org, you will find um, a link on the home page to our YouTube channel. I don't have a fancy YouTube channel yet. It's not youtube.com slash christinaskitchen because I don't have enough followers. So if you guys could help me, like that YouTube channel, follow the YouTube channel. As soon as I get enough followers, I can make a customized link. Um, so you can help me with that tonight by going over there and liking it. This needs a few more minutes to warm up, so I'm just going to set this. Christina, yes, are you done with the? Christina? I'm done with everything on the. Yep, I'm done with everything on the tray. And if you could bring me a, a plate, like a dinner plate, okay. or two, two dinner plates would be better. I'm just going to set this here in the bowl. I want you to see what these look like. Oh, wow, it's hot. What do you know? It just came out of the oven. <laughs> they are done, cooked, and ready to eat. And they smell so good. <laughs> They're amazing. So, we'll, like, sit here and eat them all in front of you. Yeah, that's And make you jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So, while I'm waiting for the griddle, I'm going to make a few of these patties. So you can see what they... So we can throw them all in the griddle as soon as it's hot and ready to go. I have made these just for fun. One time for Valentine's Day. I made these and I made them into heart shapes. And it was so much fun. And I surprised Daniel with it for Valentine's dinner. That was so sweet. <laughs> and to accentuate the heart, I took my ketchup squeeze bottle and I lined the outside edge of the heart with the ketchup. So it had a red heart all the way around the outside. They were so cute. Um, and yeah, Daniel was pretty impressed, although I think he was as impressed with the flavor as he was with the shape. <laughs> It was fun though. It was really nice. Any other questions you guys have? What's some of your favorite holiday stuff? Give me some ideas of what you want me to teach next month. Um, for, because we're going to do holiday cooking part two for December. So if you have any ideas, throw them in the chat. I want to see what your ideas are. Who knows? You just might see one of them next month. And if you want to see more of our recipes, check out all the recipes on our website. Not all our recipes are on our website yet. Um, I am still working on them and adding, I'm trying to do at least uh, a few every month, new ones added. I added a bunch just uh, last week. So um, keep checking back and you'll see more. Ah, it's ready. It's done. All right, so this, uh, this griddle is preheated to 350. And... Uh, 
we're just going to throw these on. And I'm gonna need um, the flippers, Macy. I'm gonna need a, a one for this and a, a small metal one for the super day rolls. Now you gotta hurry because we drove ahead of me now. Stacy says green bean casserole. Green bean casserole. That's a good idea. Keep your ideas coming. You never know what you'll find. So that, just like that, but smaller for the sweet potato balls. Okay. But I do need those. That one is perfect. Thank you. So you can see how much this made. We just about got the whole recipe here. We made, we've got eight patties on the griddle. I wonder if we can get 10. <laughs> We're gonna get 10 on there. <laughs> they really don't stick that much. I mean, you can slide them around. They really don't even need oil on the griddle. It, they, uh, they cook so nicely. Yes, that's the one. Thank you. Stacy says vegetarian turkey. That's what this is. <laughs> you can because this is so moldable. You seriously can like mold it into the shape of a turkey and bake it like a roast. Like you really can because it, it um, forms its shape so much. So it wouldn't cook all the way through, would it? I guess you'd have to cook it. You have to cook it longer. It takes about an hour or two hours to bake. Yeah, yeah like a turkey it takes a long time. <laughs> so I have ten patties on here and. Look at how much I got left. <laughs> so I made almost, I made what, 11 patties? Um, so that's a that's a pretty good amount. No, yeah, we can probably squeeze it on there. We'll get it all on there. She thinks like I do. All right, so here's number 11. Squeeze it in there. Not hard you made them slightly smaller, you could have gotten a dozen. Yep, yeah, you can get a dozen if you made them smaller. But I don't make anything small. Look at that giant one. It's the first one I made. It's the biggest yeah, one of all. The biggest one. <laughs> That's for Daniel. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we're just kind of we're just making them golden, basically. So these are the first ones we put on. So they're ready to flip. You're not cooking them because it's already cooked. Everything in it is already cooked. You're just browning them so they hold together nicely. when I put on, so I'm going to give it a little more time. I'm just saying that's birdseed. I'm just saying that's birdseed. Yeah, bird bird <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Macy, eating, you want to give me the ketchup? Instead of eating the bird, we eat the birdseed. That's right. We eat what the birds eat. <laughs> So our first ones are almost done. They don't take very long at all. So we're going to get a plate here. Thank you. Just up here. And I'm going to put one of these sweet potatoes on. We're going to make Daniel's plate. How's that sound? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the first one, you can tell I'm watching you do this. The first one is the hardest to get out of these things. This is my favorite server for the sweet potato balls. It's small and square. Um, I think I got it at Bed Bath & Beyond, but you can find them online. It's just a small uh, server. It fits perfectly in here. And then you have to very carefully get that first one out. There it is. There's a sweet potato ball. How many of you want, Daniel? You want one or two? I can eat two. He's waited all day for that. 
Yes, he's waited a very long time, very patiently. All right, so there's our sweet potato balls. And then our first one should be done over here. How many one of these, one or two? Oh, and then the I, biggest I think I could probably made. eat two of those. <laughs> he's hungry. Yeah. Let's see what they look like. Oh yeah, they look perfect. So we're gonna put this, the patties there. And these can cook a little longer because they were put on later. And we're gonna, I'm gonna use ketchup tonight instead of uh, cranberry sauce because I'm not making cranberry sauce tonight. But uh, this is what I like to do with them. Just put a nice strip across. And of course I like Daniel, so put that a heart. Aww. <laughs> can you get it in there? Well, I almost got the heart here, we'll finish it. There you go. <laughs> There you are. Dinner's served. All you have to do is put a salad with it or just eat that. Uh, maybe a few veggies, whatever. Um, but uh, like I said, this is holiday cooking part one. I hope you had fun. I had fun and I really enjoyed your comments and interaction. That makes it so much more fun for me. And I hope that you will join us. Mark your calendars. The third Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m. We're right here on Facebook Live. We'll be doing this all winter. And uh, hopefully by spring, we'll actually be able to open up for a live audience in addition to the Facebook Live. But we'll always be on Facebook Live. So um, third Tuesday of every month, 6 p.m. next month, will be holiday cooking part two. So be sure and join us. Danny, would you like to have our closing prayer? All right, let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you for this fun time that we've had this evening and for the, for the good food that you've created for us to eat and enjoy. I pray that you will bless each one who is watching and those who may be listening later, that uh, wherever they are, that they may uh, make and enjoy good food this holiday season and draw closer to you and to family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks again for joining us. And once again, I'm on the patties. You can fry those up ahead of time, like what we just did, and put them in the refrigerator. They don't freeze, but they do refrigerate nicely. They'll keep in the fridge for up to a week, and uh, you can just reheat them in a casserole dish with some ketchup on top, reheat it in the oven at about 300 to 350 degrees for about 20 minutes, about the same as the sweet potato balls. So you can make them both in advance, put them both in the oven, warm them up, and serve them. So have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And I look forward to seeing you next month. God bless you all. God bless. No, I just need a fork. <laughs> I just need a fork. <laughs> I need a fork. <laughs>